I think that I, I committed something impossible. I said that I will tell you about my paper with um, Christoph Meissner, which has the title as it is on this on this screen, because I was thinking that it will be just uh, instructive to understand how this how this Penrose's procedure for for this conformal cyclic cosmology works. But then I understood that it's almost impossible that I can do it uh, now because because I think that a lot of things from physics should be recalled before I, I even start telling what we were doing with Meissner. So I decided today just, just to make you a mild introduction to, 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 to this part of general relativity, which, which will be needed for understanding this, what I wanted to say in, in this, about this paper with, with Meissner. And actually, this mild introduction can be quite long and it can be even having part two and only part three can be can be can, can, i will I, I can really be able to pass to this what we are doing with meissner i think and the reason for this is that that there is a lot of uh, uh something like folklore knowledge of physicists that i think that mathematicians don't know don't know at all and what i therefore today i just decided to tell you just like first two transparencies will be just general stuff about general relativity, but then I will concentrate on on uh, energy momentum tensors of, of general relativity because it is important for all of this what I want to say or what we wanted to say in this in this paper with Meissner. So sorry for this too long introduction. So let me start very brief introduction to general relativity and those those of you who, who heard my uh, talk about Penrose's Nobel Prize the first three slides will be the same but I anyhow will repeat them to 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 to, to be uh, uh, self-consistent self-consistent okay so let me let me start with quick intro to uh, general relativity theory so in general relativity the arena for all physical events is a space-time, which is a four-dimensional manifold equipped with a metric of Lorentzian signature. And I usually take this signature as such that there is one minus and, and three pluses. Because, and you can ask why, and it's again, it's, there are two schools in physics. People have other plus and three minuses or minus and three pluses and uh, I think that those that take minuses three pluses are essentially cosmologists because cosmologists want to have space with with, 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 with Riemannian signature so if you if you look at, at general relativity books in cosmology the usual signature is minus plus 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 if you look at 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 this uh, uh, more uh, complex geometric relativists, for example, like Penrose or those that 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 use spinors, they will have the opposite signature. But I will take minus plus plus plus. So points of these manifolds are interpreted as physical physical events, and curves in these manifolds are histories of events. And now, because of uh, Lorentzian signature, there are three categories of curves. There are time-like curves for which the tangent vectors mm, uh, scalar product of themselves or, or square of, of tangent vectors is uh, has negative values. There are space-like one for which they have positive values and there are null or as Cartan calls them optical curves whose tangent vectors are non-zero but, um, but they scalar product with themselves is zero. Okay, so that's that's the first thing. Uh, the curves represents representing movements of particles in spacetime are particles word lines, and uh, physically realistic particles have word lines which are either everywhere time-like. So these are word lines of plastic particles that have mass. Or optical or null if they are mass if, if the particle if the corresponding particles are massless. So, for example, they are photons, 
or neutrinos, although physicists now say that no, neutrinos have mass. So, but but this should be if, if a particle is massless, like photon, then then the it it, it moves it moves on uh, optical curves. And curves whose tangent vectors are never space-like, so they, they, they could be time-like or, 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 or null, are called causal curves. And causal curves corresponds to word lines of physically acceptable particles. The particles that would have no causal curves, some people consider them, they call them tachyons, but who, who cares? So particles in free fall have word lines which are affinely parameterized causal geodesics. So their normalized tangent vector satisfies this geodesic equation in affine parametrization. And these uh, vectors of uh, tangent vectors to, to particles with mass are normal, is normalized to minus one and uh, null particles have this uh, length of the tangent vectors equal to zero. Okay, so the movement of test particles in free fall in gravitational field is determined, determined by the levitch vida connection of the metric. So somehow the Newtonian gravitational force is removed from the theory because the movement of particles in free fall or free particles to which only gravitational field, uh, field acts, these are simply geodesics, okay? So now, I'm passing to the main part of, of this, what I wanted to say. In general, uh, relativity, every space-time satisfies Einstein field equations. And these Einstein field equations have both, both sides as every equation. Uh, the left-hand side is purely, purely geometrical. The, the right-hand side is physical. So here in this, in this, um, in this schematically written equations, the left-hand side consisted, consists of a Ricci tensor, uh, which is trace, trace, uh, trace corrected by this term minus one half uh, Ricci scalar times metric. And this correction is needed for this, that, that, that this, that this uh, part, which is Ricci minus one half RG, uh, which is called Einstein tensor, uh, satisfies this that it is divergence free. So the, this part Ricci minus one half Rg is divergence free. Lambda is a constant and metric is metric is also divergence free because metric because levitch vida connection preserves metric. So somehow the consequence of this equation is such that the right hand side is also uh, divergence free. And the right hand side in these equations uh, is physical, so it, it describes the physical con content uh, of, 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 of this space-time, and this tensor that stays on the right-hand side is called, called uh, energy momentum tensor. Okay, so that's, that's essentially the essence of general relativity, and the rest part of my talk will be about these energy momentum tensors. Okay. So if we write these Einstein equations as uh, with, with indices, so the indices will indi indicate what kind of tensor is this Ricci guy. So Ricci guy is symmetric um, uh, second rank tensor. Likewise, the, 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 the energy momentum tensor is like this. So Although this energy momentum tensor is, so the, the energy in particular, energy momentum tensor, which stays on the right hand side of Einstein equation is symmetric. So although this energy momentum tensor is symmetric, the endomorphism tensor, which you can make of, the, of this one in terms of the metric. So if you make it into endomorphism, due to Lorentzian signature of the metric, this endomorphism tensor is not uh, symmetric. And therefore, there could be many algebraic types of this ten of this tensor. So, if we look, if we just use Einstein equations, we, we see that since uh, T mu nu, to, meaning this this uh, energy momentum tensor, is related to the Ricci tensor by 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 by, by this by this uh, equation that I. Just 
just uh, enlightened here. So one can see that eigenvalues of uh, eigenvalues of the uh, energy momentum tensor are essentially the same as eigenvalue of Ricci tensor. They are simply shifted. So if so, if you want to classify uh, uh, energy momentum tensor, it's essentially the same kind of classification as 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 uh, classific algebraic classification of the Ricci tensor. So you can either think about mathematical classification of Ricci tensor of the corresponding Lorentzian, Lorentzian manifold, or you can think about classification of physical quantity, which is represented by this energy momentum tensor. And that's essentially the same because eigenvalues are merely shifted one by to, to the other. So as I said, we may speak about algebraic classification of the energy momentum tensor or Ricci tensor and use for it the usual Jordan, Jordan classification of endomorphism in R4. But note, however, that because of signature of the metric, uh, one can also, so this classification is more subtle than, than usual Jordan classification because we have a metric, Lorentzian metric, which, which can, which can um, uh, be used to, to attribute causality to eigenspaces, right? So the, the eigenspaces could be time-like, space-like, or optical. And this thing uh, in this classification I think that the classification of uh, Ricci or energy momentum tensor is due to Plebinsky, and it is Plebinsky who really was insisting on this that there are these time like, space like, or optical types of, of various uh, subspaces possible. Okay, so the, the classification is quite complicated, but I will be not talking about all classification because I only need several energy momentum tensors and i simply will tell you what kind of what kind type what kind of type they have okay so the energy aspect of, aspect of classical matter or fields is described in terms of the symmetric energy momentum tensor coming from an appropriate physical theory so this tensor this energy momentum tensor is supposed to describe particular kind of matter, and so, you know physics is a huge science, and there is there is there are various matters considered by various physicists. So somehow the, the, the this 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 energy momentum tensor that stays on the right hand side of the Einstein equations comes usually from an appropriate physical theory corresponding to appropriate matter, and some of these tensors are purely phenomenological. For example, like the perfect fluid one, and some of them are deeper consequences of the theory, like, for example, electromagnetic uh, field energy momentum tensor. So I will review a few of these um, energy momentum tensors relevant in physics now. So, of course, the simplest energy momentum tensor is the energy momentum tensor of cosmological constant type. So in this case, the Ricci tensor has only one real eigenvalue of multiplicity four. And therefore, via, so, so, so we, essentially, we essentially have uh, then Einstein equations. Uh, so the, 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 the matrix, the matrix that corresponds to this kind of, of, of uh, energy momentum tensor are just these what mathematicians called uh, metrics satisfying Einstein equations, right? So, uh, so again, the energy momentum tensor of cosmological con constant type is such that it has only one real eigenvalue of multiplicity four, and the metrics corresponding to these energy momentum tensors are simply Einstein metrics. Of course, a special case is the is if the quadruple eigenvalue is equal to zero, and in such case we have the Ricci flat space time, space times. So space times with Ricci uh, tensor of cosmological type, uh, physicists call vacuum solutions of Einstein equations, and these are with lambda not equal zero or with uh, lambda with or without cosmological constant. So somehow. 
Space-time, which is, which is Ricci tensor of cosmological type, physicists call vacuum solutions of Einstein equations, okay? So simply, yeah, like this. Okay. And uh, why is they call it in this way? So what is a pure because, physical... Because, because, because if, you just look, if you just look at the Einstein equations, if you look at the Einstein equations, so simply uh, the, uh, the solutions of cosmological constant type correspond to T equals zero, right? If, if you put T equals zero, that's precisely, you will have free chi to be proportional to the metric. But, but uh, probably no, what is a, a pure physical meaning of cosmological constant type? So what does it mean in pure non-mathematical physical form? I, I'm just, I, I, okay, we, 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 first, of, first of all, if you just look at Einstein equations, which, uh, which is here on the top of this, of this transparency, you can see that the left-hand side says that is purely geometric. Although you have to put by hand what is your lambda, but it is some constant. So it is some constant. But this is purely geometric quantity on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, you have, you have something that comes from physics, which, which corresponds to matter. So if this T is equal zero, it means that there is no matter. So it is why so solutions with T equal zero are called vacuum solutions. With Cosmological constants in lambda is non equal zero or without cosmological constant with lambda is, is, is equal zero. Because when lambda is equal zero and t is equal zero, also Ricci's scalar is equal zero, which is a consequence of these equations. So somehow vacuum solutions are, are corresponding to t equal zero, which means that the Ricci, 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 tensor, Ricci tensor is. Uh, is it's something like black hole or something? No, no. For example, black, no. For, for, exa for example, I don't know, empty, for example, Minkowski space time. Minkowski space time is a solution of these equations with t equals zero, lambda equals zero, and entire Ricci equals zero. Uh, uh, meaning also uh, entire Riemann equals zero, in, so in particular Ricci equals zero. So Minkowski space time is a solution to this equation. But for example, the Sitter space time for which T is equal zero and lambda is equal constant is also a solution to this, to this, to this, to, to, to these equations. And physicists think that in the Sitter space, the, the, the space is curved because some primordial properties and not because of matter content, because matter content in the Sitter space is zero according to this equation. Okay. So you, all such spaces physically exist, or it is a conjecture that they exist, or <laughs> you ask me as a physicist, or you ask you you ask me, me Pavel Nurowski, to be now physicist or mathematician? No, no, I want you to be physicist, a physicist now. I want me to be physicist. The problem is that I don't want to be a physicist. <laughs> but, well, uh, okay, but. But it is very interesting because uh, uh, is it okay. just mathematic with some physical words or it has okay, some so, real so, physical so, significance? So, I will, I will, so as I said, one of the solutions of these Einstein equations with t equals zero and lambda positive, lambda positive constant, one of these solutions is something which is called the Sitter solution. So physicists believe, or actually not physicists because I don't consider cosmologists to be physicists, cosmologists be believe that the Sitter space time is the space time to which asymptotically our uh, universe converges? Oh, that's what I wanted to hear. Yeah, yeah, thanks. But I, I, I wanted to tell you about this later a bit, which, anyhow, so. so okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, so this is the simplest one. So the simplest one is the energy momentum tensor of cosmological constant type. Okay. Uh, now let's pass to the next one. So the energy momentum. So now let me let me start with this. So the energy momentum tensor of, of incompressible fluid is given by the following formula. Whatever this formula means. So let me let me decipher it. So in this formula, there is first there is a vector uh, unit time like vector u. Uh, and it's time-like and it's normalized to, to, to normalize. So it is, it's, it's, it's square is minus one. And so there is this u mu uh, guy stays here. And there are two scalar functions. There is function mu and function p. Here, mu 
this scalar function describes the energy density of the fluid and P is a scalar function describing its pressure. <coughs> okay, so, and now you can ask, so, so now if you have a perfect fluid, you can say, okay, now my, suppose that my space time is filled with perfect fluid. So I put the perfect fluid tensor like this one on the right hand side of Einstein equations. And now I try to solve this to see if I can have a space time filled with perfect fluid. Okay, so that's, that's something like this. And you can ask me, why do they take this that perfect fluid uh, why it has this 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 kind of energy momentum tensor, and the thing is, it's it comes from actually this is generalization of something which is called <coughs> stress tensor in in um, in um, uh, continuous media mechanics. So in 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 elasticity, for example. So there is the, 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 there is. And something like this also appears in hydrodynamics. And then you, if you just try to write it relativistically in four dimensions, you will get something like this. And this thing is, uh, is, 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 is coming as a phenomenal, phenomenological thing from, from fluid mechanics, for example, this, this kind of tensor. And now we can ask if you can have space times of general relativity filled with perfect fluid, okay? So uh, my, my, my goal is just to, figure out what kind of algebraic type this thing is. So uh, this uh, vector, you, this unit vector is, uh, is interpreted as a, a four velocity of particles of the fluid. So four velocity of the part of particles in the fluid. So, so you, in the fluid, you have particles. Each of these particles has its word line. And to this word line, there is <laughs> a tangent vector which is time-like and 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 normalized, and it's this vector u mu. So this u mu staying in this in this uh, formula for perfect fluid is just is just four velocity of particles of the fluid. So now, if you enter, and that's now 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 if you enter in the frame commuting commuting with the fluid, you can you, you you will be just one of these particles. So you are just moving with the fluid. So you have no no, this sp spatial velocity, so there is zero, 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 zero vector mass. So you have only time-like component, meaning that you are just happily going with the fluid up or, or staying as a particle in the fluid. So you have the, this vector u is one, one, zero, zero. And then being there locally, you see that your metric is just as diagonal form at this, at this along, along this curve. And in this frame, this, uh, energy momentum tensor with two indices down has a diagonal form and mu here is is the time like part is zero zero part and p is just the spatial part and this is why mu is uh, mu is um, interpreted as energy density and p is uh, is is interpreted as as uh, as pressure that satisfies pascal law in every direction is the same pressure right so if you if you just uh, 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 raise in the in index mu up by the metric, you will get this endomorphic tensor, and then you see that perfect fluid is a is a is a is a uh, uh, energy momentum tensor of, of a perfect fluid has algebraic type in such a way that it has two now two eigenvalues, two real eigenvalues. Uh, two of them with multiplicity, uh, one of them with multiplicity one and the other one with multiplicity three. And now if you look, if you look at uh, eigenspaces, you can see that, the, that this part related to pressure has uh, space-like eigenspaces and this part uh, related to the, to the um, energy density mu as time-like against spaces. So in this search, the perfect fluid energy momentum tensor is the next simplest simple after Einstein's because in Einstein's you had just one uh, real eigenvalue of multiplicity four and here you have two eigenvalues, one of multiplicity three and one of the multiplicity uh, one, okay?
So that's that's. So if you if, if you if you think if you just look at this formula for energy moment on of perfect fluid, you say, oh, it's it's quite complicated thing. But actually, from algebraic, from the point of view of algebraic classification of energy moment on is essentially the the case next to Einstein. So this Einstein, that mathematicians call Einstein, right? Okay. So. <clears throat> Uh, if you have this system of Einstein equations with energy momentum tensor of a perfect fluid, this system is underdetermined. So even under very strong symmetry assumptions about G, one needs additional equation to solve it. And this necessary equation to make the Einstein system determine is a phenomenolog phenomenological equation, which is called the equation of state of the fluid. And this equation of state of the fluid <coughs> Uh, is a relation between energy density and 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 pressure. In general relativity, uh, this implicit relation is usually given in the form in in the uh, solved form for p. So the simplest one, the simplest example of such of such of such pressure uh, of such equation of state. Is is uh, is an uh, uh, equation of state in such a way where p is proportional to uh, where, where pressure is proportional proportional to energy density, and especially if this w thing is a constant, such an equation uh, of state is called equation of state of polytrope. And again, don't ask me why, but it comes from now statistical physics such thing is called equation of state of a polytrope. So <clears throat> in particular, if W is equal minus one, then P plus mu is equal zero. And if you just go to the uh, perfect fluid uh, uh, definition, then you see that T mu nu is proportional. So in such case, mu plus P is equal zero and T mu nu is pro proportional to, to the metric. So, uh, so this case where, where polytrope has uh, w equal to minus one is again the cosmological constant type of energy momentum tensor. So somehow you can even think that, that there are perfect fluids with, for which this equation of state is polytrope, where p plus mu is equal zero, and this is again cosmological constant type of solution, which is essentially Einstein solution to the Einstein equations because then T mu nu is just proportional to the to the metric. So Ricci tensor is proportional to the metric and everything is just like, like in, in the case of, of uh, the cosmological constant case. So if W is minus one in this polytrope equation, we are again in the case of, 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 uh, of uh, cosmological constant type of equations. If W is equal to zero, then P is equal to zero. So there is no pressure. So somehow this is the situation <coughs> uh, where the fluid is simply dust. So dust is, the, the, there are particles that, 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 that have no pressure at all. And in this case, the energy momentum tensor looks, looks like this. So this is, so, so among cosmological constant type of, 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 of of uh, of uh, 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 among um, mamma mia among perfect fluids with polytrope there is there is perfect fluid which is simply dust and in dust the energy momentum tensor has two real eigenvalues one eigenvalue is uh, with multiplicity free is equal to zero and the other eigenvalue is this function mu, right? So that's that's you you can have something like this, and this corresponds to very important, very important um, uh, matter content, which is simply dust. Okay. If W is equal one third, then the the the, the pressure uh, is related to 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 energy momentum tensor by this relation that P is equal one third of of mu. And this is relation, again, known from statistical physics and electromagnetic, electromagnetic theory, 
that this is a, 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 a relation between pressure and energy density as pressure uh, being uh, being uh, produced by light by beams of light carrying energy density mu so somehow this this among these polytropes there is there is also uh, the, 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 there is also there are also such perfect fluids in which in which uh, the uh, you can have as a, as a matter incoherent radiation so it is it is perfect fluid with p equal one third energy density so now let me let me let me tell you why it is important for cosmology because now it's another information now from cosmology so in standard cosmology cosmologists believe that the universe at the beginning so this is essentially answering question of Michel Zitorinsky so they believe that uh, that essentially universe satisfies Einstein equations with energy momentum tensor of perfect fluid and actually of perfect fluid is this polytrope kind of equations of state and they believe that at the very beginning the universe was radiation dominated. So in, at, at the beginning of evolution of universe, it was filled with perfect fluid with polytropy equal one third of mu equation of state. Now, they believe that now the universe is matter dominated. So matter dominated meaning that there, are, there is like homogeneous distribution of, of stars which don't interact, they, they don't put any pressure on, on themselves. So there's just the, uh, the matter dominated universe, which is now, which is just perfect fluid with P equal zero. And then they believe that at the end of it, the, the evolution, the, uh, the uh, universe will be uh, behaving like, like uh, this perfect fluid of cosmological constant type where P is equal to minus mu, and this is what I said that it will be asymptotically the sitter. There are there are okay. There are there are more fancy cosmologies in which they consider matter context content with w equal minus one third, and this corresponds to something they call gas of strings, and even w equal min minus two third, and it corresponds to a gas of something which they call domain walls. I even don't comment about this, but I'm saying that that essentially, if, if as I said, you have to you have to supplement this perfect fluid with an equation of state, which is in, in general any function uh, of mu as p. Then they restrict to p equal w mu to these polytropes things. Actually, where w is actually, usually they consider that this w is only on the constant, but sometimes not. And, and then if you just really read them, only few cases of this W are inter interesting for them, they, namely W equal minus one, W equal zero, W equal one third, and maybe minus two third and maybe minus one third. If you give them any other value of W, they say, no, 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 we don't want it. We don't want it. So I will comment also about this. So that somehow they have some discrete values that they are they 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 laugh okay okay so let me let me comment about this a bit aha before this so let me pass to the next energy momentum tensor namely uh, energy momentum tensor <coughs> of uh, of electromagnetic field so uh, the electromagnetic field in vacuum is described in general relativity by a field of a two form satisfying Maxwell's equations. Okay, here this star D is just the usual exterior derivative and, and star is just Hodge dual of this form. Uh, you can use Hodge dual related to the metric and orientation of your space time. So they, so in general relativity, uh, Maxwell field or electromagnetic field is, is described in terms of these two form and these two forms should satisfy my Maxwell equations, but these Maxwell equations should be coupled to the Einstein equations, which describe gravitational field. And the source of this gravitational field must be Maxwell, uh, Maxwell field. And it comes from electromagnetic theory of, of, of Maxwell, 
that the energy momentum tensor associated with Maxwell field is just given by this formula. And actually, it is, I think that is the first time it, it, was, it was already in Maxwell's, Maxwell's uh, book that this kind of tensor appeared, I think, it, but here is the four dimensional, uh, here is the energy momentum tensor in, in his four, in, in his all four dimensional beauty, which has this uh, zero spatial components and which has also also the spatial spatial components. So this zero spatial components in Maxwell theory is called pointing vector and the spatial spatial components, uh, which is uh, which is free by free matrix is called in Maxwell, I think Maxwell stress tensor. So somehow this Maxwell tensor that I just wrote here comes really from Maxwell's theory and is relativistic relativistic um, combination of two things, the pointing vector and, and the Maxwell stress tensor. So somehow making, repeating everything. So electromagnetic field in, in, in general relativity is described by a metric G and a two form F, two form and the metric satisfy couple system of, my, uh, of Maxwell equations, which is just written uh, here on this transparency. I repeat that, that, that somehow, so from the, from, from the, from the, from the general relativity theory, the, the, if you look at Einstein equations, Einstein equation is not vacuum anymore because the, it has a source, but the source is Maxwell field in a vac, in vacuum. So, you know, they have a lot of termo terminological uh, problems, even when they, when they say what they, what they do, but they, they would say that is Maxwell field in vacuum, although it is Maxwell field that is just matter for the Einstein equations. Okay, <clears throat> okay. so now uh, we, 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 can, we, can, we can figure out what is the algebraic type of the, of the Maxwell, Maxwell's energy momentum tensor. Ah, maybe the first thing you can observe is that if you take, take trace of this tensor, so if you just, uh, if you just, uh, contract it with G mu nu is to up to indices up, then you will say that trace of this thing, whatever this F is, is zero. So Maxwell, Maxwell, Maxwell's, uh, Maxwell's energy momentum tensor is traceless. And now if you just go back to this, what I was talking about, about uh, uh, perfect fluid, here, if you look at perfect fluid tensor, so you can ask when perfect fluid tensor uh, has zero trace. And then if you just trace this, this equation, use the, 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 the information that, 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 uh, that the vector u is normalized to minus one, then you will get that T, this uh, incompressible fluid uh, energy momentum tensor is traceless if and only if P is equal one third of mu. So somehow, so, so it is why maybe, just that's a hint, why they say here that when you have polytrope with P equal one third mu, this corresponds to incoherent radiation of Maxwell field, or, or it is pressure of, uh, pressure of light carrying energy density mu, because it's somehow, it is, it is the, the in, that's the only instance when perfect fluid has zero trace as a, as a Maxwell energy momentum tensor. And it is why, not, maybe not, it, there are deeper reasons, but you can just remember it if you want to recover. Oh, somebody gave me, gave me the, the energy momentum tensor of, of, of perfect fluid. Which one corresponds to, which one corresponds to, the, to the, uh, this light uh, pressure, then you will recover it by putting the conditions that, that, that it should be uh, traceless and it is precise that is that P equal one third mu. Okay, so, so now let me, let me, let me pass you know, farther to uh, figure out what is the algebraic type of mm, this Maxwell energy momentum tensor. And this one is quite more complicated because somehow uh, the algebraic properties of this energy momentum tensor depends on algebraic properties of the uh, Maxwell two form. So if you, uh, and it turns out that actually there are two quite different algebraic kinds of 
Maxwell fields uh, and to to get them to 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 get them specified one one can for example make a complex two form of this f and it's Hodge dual and one uh, definitely there is there is there is uh, an invariant here which is just a wedge of this f twiddle if it itself if this f twiddle is itself wedge is zero this maxwell two form is called Simple, if it is non-zero, it is called general. So depending on this, if the Maxwell field is simple or not, we have two different kinds of, of energy momentum tensor. And if F twiddle is not simple, the corresponding energy momentum tensor has two real eigenvalues, each with multiplicity two. Two of them are time-like, two of them are, I think, space-like. But when F is simple, then it turns out, it turns out that if, if, you, if you just look, what does it mean that F uh, twiddle with wedge twiddle is equal to zero? It means that both Lorentz invariants of this F are zero. And this means in particular, you can just this purely algebraic fact that there exists a non-zero real vector field K, which is null, and such that it annihilates this form. And it turns out that in such a case, so, so associated with this field, there is this K vector, which is null. And this vector, if you, if you just calculate what does it mean, uh, this formula for T mu nu for such F, uh, for which F twiddle, you know, with F twiddle is zero, then you will see that actually the energy momentum tensor looks like this with K mu, K nu, where k is just this null vector, OK? So the electromagnetic field corresponding to a simple form, to form f twiddle, is called null. And null electromagnetic field corresponds to, again, it's physics information. Null electromagnetic fields corresponds to pure radiation. If you, for example, if you look at, at plane waves, play, plane electromagnetic waves, in Minkowski spacetime, then you will discover that plane electromagnetic wave in, 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 in Minkowski spacetime is of this type. And you remember that plane electromagnetic field has this, uh, plane wave electromagnetic field has this property that, that electric field is perpendicular to the magnetic field and, and, and E square is equal B squared. So actually both invariants uh, uh, that, that uh, uh, scalar product of electric and magnetic field is equal to zero, and that electric field is equal to magnetic field, uh, are, or electric field minus magnetic field is equal to zero. Both invariants of electromagnetic field is zero, and it's precisely corresponds to this that is formed F twiddle, with which F twiddle is equal to zero. So somehow this, 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 uh, this uh, uh, electromagnetic uh, fields for which, for which this F twiddle with F twiddle is equal to zero is an electromagnetic field of the type of plane electromagnetic wave in, in Minkowski spacetime. And this vector K has, has uh, obvious interpretation. It's just pro propagation, propagation vector of the, of the, of the, um, of the wave. <clears throat> so starting with Maxwell theory, you get Two kind of uh, 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 two algebraic type of uh, 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 energy momentum tensor, namely this one, which is which corresponds to non-null fields, and this one that corresponds to null fields. And for this, these tensors that corresponds to null electromagnetic fields have this 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 form that T mu nu is proportional to K mu K nu. And now you can forget about Maxwell theory, and you can consider phenomenological energy momentum tensor of the form T, T mu nu being proportional to K mu K nu without this K being referenced to any electromagnetic field. And such energy momentum tensors, they interpret as being produced by radiation of massless, massless particles propagating with speed of light along the rays of K mu, right? So if you just compare this, this energy momentum tensor for, 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 uh, for these null fields with 
the energy momentum tensor of perfect fluid for a dust, this is almost the same. In the dust, you have this U vector here, which, which, which is time-like. In, uh, in this pure radiation thing, you have this K. So somehow, in this, in this sense, they sometimes call this kind of energy momentum tensor as, which I call pure radiation, they also call it null dust. Okay, because now, because there is the energy is propagating along null vectors and not like in in, in case of uh, of usual dust along along uh, uh, time like vector. Okay, so why I'm talking about this? I I, I didn't. I, I I will I will explain in a second why I'm talking about all of this. But let me do the last thing still. <clears throat> so, not every energy, not if, if you just come with team you knew with two indices down, which is symmetric, you can always put it on the right hand side, or even better, you can take any metric, calculate this left hand side of Einstein equations, this Ricci minus one half Ricci scalar time metric, choose your favorite, and calculate this, this, this thing, and then what you, you will get something and call it energy momentum tensor. And then say, oh, I have an equation, uh, solution of Einstein equation with an energy momentum tensor. But, but physicists would like that this energy momentum tensor is one of these that they want. And moreover, they want that this energy momentum tensor should satisfy certain inequalities because it should satisfy something which is physical. In, in particular, they have, they, have, they have desire that the energy density should be, should be positive. So actually, they want that what you have on the right-hand side this energy momentum tensor has to satisfy something which they call dominant energy condition. So what is this dom dominant energy condition? They want that the local energy density as measured by any observer with four velocity u mu is non-negative. So they take your the energy momentum tensor and take any, any four velocity vector u mu normalize, let's say, to minus one. And they want that for any such vector, this quantity rho must be non-negative. Moreover, because they interpret it, because how they interpret this rho, they, they, they interpreted this rho as a projection of energy onto the observer. So it is this energy that observer, energy density that observer measures, and they want that this should be non-negative. Moreover, they want that local energy flow, as measured by this observer, should be causal, shouldn't be space-like. So for example, if you if you apply, if, if you if, if you start with if you start with perfect fluid energy momentum tensor, which was here. And now if you want that this guy satisfies this dominant energy condition, then you will get some uh, inequalities for mu and p. And actually it turns out that uh, perfect fluid satisfying energy, the dominant energy condition, conditions uh, are such that mu must be always greater than equal zero because that's energy density. And this W for this, uh, for this, for this um, polytropes, uh, the, the absolute value of this should be smaller than equal one. So you remember that I said that, that, that what they want, they, that they are interested with minus one, they are interested with zero, they are interested with one third, minus two third, and minus one third. So all of them are in this range. So that's essentially what, what uh, so, 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 so if, you, if, if you consider Einstein equation is perfect fluid with equation of state of polytrope, you always want, or they always want that Energy this, that this energy density mu must be non-negative, and then this W must be between between one, which gives some hint why they only consider these guys that are this W that I already mentioned. Okay, so why I'm talking about all of this? I'm talking about all of this because I am I I want somehow to perform this uh, panel of this program about this conformal cyclic cosmology, at least mathematically. And there, what, what, what is needed, it is needed to somehow, somehow to 
now to, to characterize conformally various energy momentum tensors. That's what that's mathematically that's what is needed at certain moment. So let me let me let me let me tell you uh, the the problem that I have here. So let me first recall that a space time m with a conformal class of metrics uh, uh, g. It means with Lorentzian metrics such that any two are related to each other via conformal transformation is called a conformal space time. And here is the problem, which is which is which can be unrelated to anything. It's purely mathematic mathematical problem. Characterize conformal space times having in conformal class all metrics whose energy momentum tensors via Einstein equations is in a given algebraic type. So, for example, you can the, the first thing one one can ask the, the, the following question: Can you characterize conformally Einstein equations? Can you characterize those metrics? They that 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 include in a conformal that always in the conformal class include an Einstein metric, or in terms of this classification that I said, a metric whose uh, Ricci tensor or energy momentum tensor is of cosmological constant type. Another thing, and now once you know that there are plenty of these of this, uh, algebraic possibilities of energy momentum tensor, and there is a number of physically interesting, what I would like to do, and what I, what I need at certain moment, actually quickly what I need, I need a characterization of, um, conformal characterization of, uh, of um, space times that include uh, perfect fluid uh, metrics, metrics of with energy momentum tensor of perfect fluid type. So, in this problem, the answer is known for Einstein metrics and for the metrics of pure radiations, namely for those that were that were here, right? For these metrics for which T mu nu is. So, if if you con if we consider metrics that are conf in which in a conformal class has has metrics with tensor energy momentum tensor of uh, type of pure radiation, then we can also uh, uh, characterize them. But but I would like to at least at least find characterization of those conformal uh, uh, classes that are on this list here for this W minus one W zero. Uh, what the W minus one we have. For W0, even this is not known. For W130, it is not known. So one should, I, 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 need, I need this kind of characterization. So it is why this talk was about this. And this is, this is uh, what will be in my next talk, if you want to listen to me, because I plan to, I, I, I really plan to tell you what is in the Meissner paper, but for, Saying what is in this paper with Meissner, I had to, I had to make this introduction because otherwise it would be, it would be un, understandable, I believe. So as uh, let me let me let me give you a literature that could be relevant to this what I said. So the classification of of energy momentum tensor in space time is due to is, is due to Plebinsky. Uh, and this is in this article, article in Acta Physica Polonica from 1964. The conformal characterization of space times with a given energy momentum tensor. So the I conformal Einstein space is the first paper which really made it correctly and to the very, almost to the very end is this one by uh, Carlos Kozame, Ted Newman, and uh, Paul Todd. And it's in general relativity gravitation in 1995. Then, uh, when I visited Ted Newman, I just revisited this paper uh, with him and Carlos in 2003, 20 years later. Then with Rod Gover, we just did it for n-dimensional, in n-dimensions, which is not relevant to my talk at all because I need it only in dimension four and only in dimension in Lorentzian signature, but, but the thing in, and dimensions is done by yeah, Rod Gover, together perhaps with me, 
uh, in this paper. And the conformal characterization of pure, pure radiation is in a paper with Thomas Leisner recently. So I asked to work on this problem, which is here. Uh, I asked to work to, on this to Jarosław Kopiński. I don't know if, if anybody would like to collaborate with us in this, we, we would be very happy. I think that Thomas Leisner also wants to, uh, uh, to, 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 to work in this problem. Okay, I think that that's enough for today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Rafael. Um, so is that <coughs> any so, question? But what kind of, for example, abstraction to conformal lines? So it's what kind of abstraction? Is it topological? What, what kind of abstraction? No, 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 no. We are, we are, we, we are, we, we are interested in local, local abstractions. We, so uh, local abstractions. Every, everything what I, what I want here is local characterization. Yes. So there, there should, it, it, it turns out that, for, for example, for example, in, 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 in case of uh, conformal to Einstein in four dimensions, there are two conformal invariants which should vanish for for, mm. for, 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 for metric to be conformal to Einstein. One of these invariants is of fourth order, and it is uh, Bach tensor. So Bach tensor for the metric must be must be zero. Uh, it is a necessary condition. And then there is there is the, to have sufficient conditions are quite complicated because of Lorentzian signature. And the sufficient conditions depend on algebraic type of the vile tensor of the conformal class. But I am all, all, only interested in local, local, local characterization of this. Yes. That, that. So, given a metric to give uh, some condition in terms of some invariants, that's says right. that in, in, in or, the conformal or better, class. Or better, or better, given a conformal class, find yes. me conformal invariants telling that if they vanish, mm. then the metric is includes in the class a metric which is conform which is which is for example Einstein or which is for example perfect fluid of P equal one third mu. That's what I want. Mm -hmm. okay. And yeah. Yeah. Uh, just one quick question about this uh, algebraic type of the vile tensor. Physically, is there any preference for, you know, sort of focusing on certain algebraic types? Uh, than Again, it, it, it depends what you want to do. <laughs> for example, physicists believe that, 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 uh, that, uh, that uh, radiation, not even belief. Okay, so if there is no cosmological constant, and if you want to have any kind of radiative space time, it means that asymptotically, this radiative spacetime should be of conformal type N, for example. So it depends on physical problem, but 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 that's a, the, the story here is a deeper and deeper, and everything is because of this crazy Lorentzian signature, which makes a lot of cases to be to be to be satisfied to to be considered. To make a full characterization, but but uh, uh, but as I said, from physical point of view, you can have some hint that, for example, not only you want that is conformal to conformal to to uh, let's say pure radiation, but you would like also like that it is in conformal of type N, for example, or something like this. Okay, there is. Everything here is very flexible. It is like in, in, in mathematics, you can ask a question, but physicists sometimes say, "Oh, but actually, I would like to do to, to have some another condition." Like 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 here, I, I told you almost entire story about about these uh, classifications of energy moment and tensor, and suddenly I'm coming with with some inequalities which have nothing to do with this what I said before, right? So, and and for example, when 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 I when I speak with um, uh, really great physicists, like for example, Roger Penrose, I'm just, he, he tells me something that he would like to do something. So I'm thinking mathematically what he wants. Then I'm coming to him and say, I have it. And he says, no, 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 that's not what I wanted. It's very difficult with that, you know? Pavel, within what you explained, what Einstein, you and what he didn't. Say it again. 
within uh, what you explained uh, now, what Einstein, Einstein knew and what he didn't? What he did or what he didn't? What he knew, what he knew. Ah, what he knew. And what uh, he didn't knew. He definitely didn't knew conformal characterization of Einstein, uh, Lorentzian for manifold. That he didn't knew because this... This, I think, for the first time is, the, is in the paper of uh, Paul Todd and Ted Newman and Carlos Kozama. What Einstein knew, Einstein knew... Okay, Einstein was never interested in algebraic classification of, of uh, energy momentum tensor. Einstein was never interested in algebraic classification of wire tensor. This, uh, all of this story is from starting from this part of relativity, which I call... Uh, revision of relativity in 1960s, precisely at the moment when Einstein died. When Einstein died, new guys came and started to, 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 to do more mathematical things. Einstein, okay, but... but and phys physical terminology is due to Einstein or...? Okay, it depends. For example, the, the, the main terminology that we use, like, like space-time and word lines, is due to Minkowski from 1907. So... So the terminology mainly is from 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 uh, Minkowski, I would say. He he just give names to things, uh, and Minkowski was a mathematician. That's Einstein the, invented cosmological constant, right? Einstein invented cosmological constant. Correct. <laughs> Einstein invented cosmological constant because he. He ah so that's a that, that's a good that's a good comment the, thank you Yarek so it, it's a Einstein invented cosmological constant and it refers to this what Misha Zitomirsky was asking so Einstein when he made his ex equations at the in let's say 1915 the equations were without this lambda here so in this equation so his equations were Ricci minus one half R G there was no this Einstein, um, uh, this, this thing. And, and actually, there was zero in here. There was zero here. And what uh, Einstein uh, wanted to do, first thing he wanted to apply his theory was the, to the theory of the universe. He wanted to know what is, if, if universe or space-time related to the universe uh, satisfies his equations. So he had these equations, Ricci minus one half RG equals zero. And he said, okay, so what could be the universe? The universe should be something perfect. So what is perfect? It is just, it is just uh, as a manifold, it will be real line, which is a time, and as the space, the, 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 the most beautiful thing I can imagine, namely a sphere. So he took a Cartesian product of real line with a three-dimensional sphere, and he put uh, the canonical, like not canonical, it's, he put the, 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 the obvious uh, metric uh, on this, on this, uh, uh, put, put the ob 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 obvious, obvious metric on this, uh, uh, manifold, which was simply dt squared, or minus dt squared in my, in my signature, minus dt squared, which t was the, along this line, plus, uh, let's say, uh, r, no, no, let's say, uh, number, like a squared, and standard metric on a sphere. And then he put it, he calculated the, the, the left hand, the left hand side of this of this equation. So he, he calculated Ricci minus one half RG and equals and some energy momentum tensor came out from this calculation. And this energy momentum tensor was precisely energy momentum tensor of perfect fluid like, like here. Uh, it was energy momentum tensor of perfect fluid when he calculated calculated this, uh, this Ricci minus one half RG. So he gets right hand side, which was this, but now there was no pressure. So very good. There was, or maybe there was, there was, there, there was mu, but 
and mu was constant, everything was nice. So the, 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 the space time was static. The, the trouble is that there was cosmological constant. And he said, okay, so he's, he's, he, he simply his, uh, his beautiful universe, which is called Einstein universe, which is just a uh, real line times a sphere with the metric dt, dt, minus dt squared plus the metric on the sphere, didn't satisfy Einstein equations without cosmological constant. So he put cosmological constant in the equations. Uh, and then when Hubble, when Hubble in 1922 observed that the galactics are, are escaping from each other, uh, which means that the universe is not static anymore, and it was statis stati staticity of Einstein universe that required this lambda, then Einstein abandoned lambda from, from, from his equation and was telling that is the, the most the biggest mistake of his life. But now lambda is again revived, and even in 2005 or 2006, uh, Brian Schmidt, Perlemutzer, and the third one, I don't remember the name, got the Nobel Prize for this, that lambda do exist and it is positive, positive which will be important for my main, next talk if you want to listen to this. Okay. Pavel, small question. Um, so the, uh, these values, one third and two third corresponding, I think some gas or something like that. But I mean, to me, that doesn't really mean much. I mean, uh, so yeah. mathematically, is there anything distinguishing no, no. about these values? I mean, okay. So I don't know if mathematically. Okay, okay. There is there is there is one mathematically which is uh, which is uh, distinguished, which is just this p equal one third mu because mathematically it means that the. Um, the moment on the is traceless, so it is well mathematically distinguished value, right? Okay, okay, okay. But like these other ones that you mentioned at the bottom, this uh, uh, this, minus one third, minus two thirds. Do those have anything uh, distinguished? Okay, as, you know, I hate cosmology because it's worse than religion, any kind of. Because <laughs> my, in my in my life, in my life, the the paradigm of cosmology, as given by cosmologists, changed already five times. Every 10 years, every, some, every new observation they have, every new window opens in technology, they totally change paradigm. So I, I, don't, I, I don't know, but so, and, and, and as I said, only these, these three guys, which are just the P equal one third mu, P equal zero and P equal minus mu are the ones that they really use in standard cosmology. There are most, more fancy cosmologists in which also they mention these ones. I can give you reference to this, but it's just purely f physical. And somehow, okay, I, 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 don't, I don't know much about this. But, but for example, I would like to know how to characterize, how to characterize perfect, conformal perfect fluids with P equal one third mu equ uh, equation of state. I really would like to have it, okay? Okay, thank you. Uh, again, again, from my physics, physics ignorance, so like when you speak about electromagnetic field, so then like uh, did like in general electromagnetic field change the the, the gravitation field? I'm, I'm not I'm not sure why you you can put electromagnetic field in the right hand side. Yes, Is so it, yes, that's precisely as you said the. The electromagnetic field carries energy, and mm -hmm. energy is a source of gravity according to Einstein equation. So it should be put there. Oh, okay. So it, like electromagnetic field can be a source of gravitation. That's right. That's right. The, 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 the an electromagnetic field, which satisfies mm -hmm. its equations in vacuum, because here is zero, in, 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 in general here is not zero if there are currents, but suppose that there are no currents. So the, these, are, these are the Maxwell equations in vacuum, but because electromagnetic field carries energy and it has its own energy momentum tensor, so therefore it is a source of changing of the metric. And somehow the, the, the system, you cannot speak about uh, absolutely, absolutely um, uh, 
free electromagnetic field. Electromagnetic field is coupled to gravitational field. So somehow you have two unknowns. It is metric G and F that satisfy this system of equations that is written on this page. So mathematically it is like this and physicists would say that somehow, somehow gravity produces the movement of the energy and energy is just producing gravity. So it is like they are on equal footing. They are, so there are two things on, on, two, on, two, on both sides. On one side there is geometry on the, <coughs> which, okay, which is metric, which is identified with, with, with gravitational potential. On the other hand is, is uh, energy, any kind of other energy like particles, other fields, it could be scalar field, it could be uh, Klein-Gordon field, it could be every of mm -hmm. these fields have its proper energy momentum tensor. So if you, for example, if you want to consider scalar field in general relativity, you should write Klein-Gordon equation, which field satisfies in the vacuum, and you mm -hmm. should write corresponding energy momentum tensor, put this uh, energy momentum tensor in the equations, and now we will have a system of the equations which, which is similar to this one, like here, but now instead of F, which corresponds to Maxwell field, you would have, you would have a Klein-Gordon field, scalar field. For example, you, you can also see here that, that these equations are quite, these equations, the Maxwell equations are really quite horribly coupled because you may say, okay, first I have these Maxwell equations which are in the first line, the df equals zero and the star f is equal zero. And then I have the Einstein equation. So somehow these Maxwell equations, I can consider separately. No, because here is a hot star and hot star depends on the metric and metric is, a, is staying in the ex, next equation. So it is quite complicated system of equations. Good, thank you. And of course, what they do sometimes, they, they put, and th that will be something which I will be doing this paper in Meissner, that you can, on the right-hand side, you can put a combination of these energy momentum tensors. You can have Maxwell field, you, have, you can have particles, you can have perfect fluid, you can have some plasma. So you put a lot of well, right -hand just side. A, a sum or like it's more complicated? <laughs> That's a good question. If you put it in the sum, then you'll say, oh, so then it, so you can put a sum of those. And then they say, oh, so what are you doing? And I said, oh, I'm considering this. For example, I can put two perfect fluids, one perfect fluid with mu one and P one and another perfect fluid mu two and P two. And what I would do, I would just write an energy momentum tensor T one for one perfect fluid and energy momentum tensor T two for another perfect fluid. And then I put a sum of them on the right hand side of Einstein equations. And they say, ah, they say, ah, so you are considering perfect fluids which are not interacting. They have, they have okay. a term for everything. But, but of course, the, if they interact, then the energy momentum tensor will be just of some perfect fluid interacting. And then you have to have some physics to how to write such energy momentum tensor. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Still something? Yarek, maybe you can comment because you have good comments. You are fresh general relativist. I am old and I was relati general relativist 25 years ago. <laughs> well, so uh, in the case of perfect fluid with P equal one third overall, there is this issue that, so you, you're starting with an assumption that your velocity, fluid velocity is a, is a time-like vector, right? Mm -hmm. And then you want to go to, to P equal one third of rho, which means that this, this, this corresponds to the, this not null fluid, right? So you, you would expect that your the f f velocity would go from time-like vector to null vector, but it stays time-like. No, 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 the, 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 the P equal one third mu, P equal one third mu thing, is not perfect fluid with P equal one third mu uh, equation of state is not an energy momentum tensor of pure radiation. It is not uh, T mu nu equal K mu K nu. It is simply perfect fluid. The, 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 here, here the energy, here the energy, uh, energy is not traveling uh, 
with speed of light along some preferred direction k. The, there is some average energy mu which, which travels with the time like vector u. Right? Yeah, but it's like it's light carrying. It says here light carrying energy density. So when I'm when I'm when I see light, I immediately connect this to null vector. No, no, but but but, but, but there is, this this is this is a mixture of lights in every direction. This is what this, what this p equal one third mu. And when you average, then you will get perfect fluid energy momentum density. The only thing which survives there is that the that the that the trace of this perfect fluid guy is zero, as in a usual Maxwell. Yeah. Oh, okay. So now, so now I have a question because I, I don't want to dominate this thing at all. And I, I even don't want to talk anymore, but if, but I simply said that I will say more about this, how to, to show you an example how to make this this procedure of of uh, these Penrose CCC. So shall I still speak about this, or you are you don't want me anymore? Which I will be very happy not to talk. <laughs> Anybody can say no, Pavel, mm -hmm. shut up, never talk anymore. I, I, oh, please, I, please talk, Pavel. It's, it's very good. I want to listen to you again. You want or you don't want? Yeah, I won't. Yes. Okay. 